Hello, it's a beautiful spring day here. I'm now living in North Carolina. I moved away from uh, Wyoming last fall in an offer on my home I couldn't turn down. And so I decided I'd return to North Carolina and be close to my family. And that's been a very good thing. It's been a very interesting six months. I really have not talked to you in that long length of time. I don't think I've really talked to you since I moved. And, and so I wanted to catch you up a little bit on where what I've gone through, but more importantly, what I see as the, the significant stories or the significant changes that have taken place in the last year. Uh, first of all, I am uh, happy to be where I am and things are good and I'm uh, writing and uh, continue to work on uh, short books. Uh, they've been more difficult to, to work on because there's been a lot of distractions in moving, uh, a lot of family stuff and we had two weddings and you know that sort of stuff. But what, this is what I'm, I'm seeing. And, and the, first, the first thing is that the, the, the sort of the prediction that I made in the circle of impact about the two global forces, that was very much what I was seeing going on and I was projecting out into the future. This is what I see happening later. It's happening now. That change of the two global forces is happening now. What is the two global forces? There's the global force of centralized uh, institutional governance finance, and there's the global force of decentralized networks of relationships. It's very obvious that the centralized institutions of finance and governance are, um, are elevating their game and they're, they're seeking to, to gain greater control over the circumstances of the world. And uh, I mean, when you, uh, when you create a vaccine that you want seven and a half billion people to take, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a major step in seeking to have control over the world. But I'm not sure that that's the real story here. In fact, I think it's, it's, um, it's just an example of what we've been seeing for at least the last hundred years of how governments want to be, um, to master the control of the circumstances of their nations. And in this case, now it's the world. What is different is that we're now looking at the growth of these networks of relationships. Let me describe what, uh, how uh, I see this through the story, story that I was told by a gentleman this past week. This guy uh, lives here in the US and there's a group of them who formed this organization to support local and national organizations in other countries in the world um, who are dealing with the situation related to orphans. Children who are vulnerable, who are no longer in their homes or, or should be taken from their homes because their families are very toxic and, and uh, dangerous for them, whatever it may be. Um, so there, there are organizations, national organizations and local organizations around the world that are caring for orphans. And this guy's group services them. They, they service them by doing training and helping to do strategic planning and uh, supporting leaders and coordinating how uh, the work between countries can, can be done. It's a very, it's a very great thing. And uh, so we, we met, we had coffee and we talked for a couple hours and, and he told us, so what, what's transpired over the last year? He says, been the greatest thing that we could have imagined. I said, what do you mean? He says, well, before we, we would go out and we would see the people in these countries a couple of times a year, every six months or so, maybe more often in some cases, but, but not often. He said, now, uh, we see them every two weeks and we're, now we're doing a whole lot more training and now we're doing a whole lot more uh, strategy formation. And so this, this idea of the network of relationships rising in importance is right there before or in, right there happening around the world right now. And nobody knows about that because it's being done in small ways through virtual situations like Zoom, through, other, through their phones, and they're making a difference and they're changing 
how orphans are being cared for. I can give you another example of this. I have uh, a friend in uh, Uganda who has a, is the pastor of a church. He, he called me back last spring, a year ago, and he said, the people in our neighborhood, our community, in our village, our, our town, um, don't have any food. We're out of food. What are we, what are we gonna do? We're in lockdown, what are we gonna do? I said, I told him, I said, you need to go to your local elected official and say, if you get the food, if you get the food, we'll distribute it. And that's what happened. And, and so our network of him having a problem of me talking him through and giving him advice on how to, to do that made a difference. Then, because he, I think because he was um, inspired by being able to do something that made a difference, he went out and leased land north of Kampala and, and they started growing crops. And so they, so they grew, they started this back in June, late summer, they, uh, they harvested the crops, they could feed people. All of this taking place during the pandemic where lockdowns were, were going on. And he, he could do that because there was a network that he was a part of, and I'm, being, I'm a part of his network where ideas that were practical and um, effective could be, could be offered. That's happening all over the world, but you never know it unless you're a part of that network. So that's a really important, important thing that's happening, I believe. And it's going to continue. And, um, and just as businesses have turned to virtual offices, they sent their people home, their social distancing, um, by, living, by doing work from home, maybe coming to the office once a week. But that's, gonna, that's going to continue. And because it saves money, but what they found is that the work got better. The performance of, of employees improved by being at home. And that's, that's really important to understand. So we're, we're in a very dramatic and accelerating change process right now. And whatever you think is happening is only part of the story. No one that I've read and no one that I've listened to has the whole story. And so you, you really need to be looking broadly, you need to read widely, and you need to be skeptical of everything you hear. You need to be skeptical of what I'm saying. You need to make your own decisions. You need to make your, to discern what it is the right thing for you to go do. And that really comes back to you having a strong sense of identity, a strong sense of, of who you are as a person, knowing what your values are, what your purpose is, Otherwise, you're just going to get lost in the madness of the fear mongering and the paranoia that continues to be visited upon us around the world. So what I'm going, what I'm doing, just to kind of give you an idea, is that I'm um, I'm going to restart my consulting practice, which I closed at the end of 2014. And it's going to be focusing on elevating the leadership capacities of people in business. And a lot of that has to do with training managers and supervisors in how to develop the leadership capacities of their people. And once that happens, what we'll see, what we see from that is we see all these, what some might call small problems, but they're not small problems to the person who is immediately affected by it. It's a big problem, but those are localized problems. And where you can get people who are local in the business or in the community to solve the problems that they are immediately responsible for so that it doesn't get passed up to the, to the senior vice president's level. Once you can do that, once you train people to do that and you support them in doing that, then you have this, ex, this expansion of leadership capacity that didn't exist before. All, a lot of things go into that. And if you've read Circle of Impact, those, those ideas in there are a major part of that. But there's some more that I've come to see because of the stories and the problems you've shared with me and the questions you've asked of me. And so we have, uh, we have, a, lot of, uh, we have a lot of work to do and I'm excited about it. 
So this is not the last newsletter. This is just the next one. And uh, some exciting things will, will be coming over the course of this next year. And I hope you will share, share with me and share in some of those things. Uh, two, two last things to share with you that I'm really very proud of. And it is, um, it is validation of what I'm doing and the book that I wrote. Sometime this summer, later this summer, a revised edition of the Circle of Impact will be published in, in Nairobi, Kenya. This book will be called Circle of Impact Africa. All the stories and case studies that are in the book now will be, are being taken out and being rewritten for an African audience. And we will be including also African proverbs throughout the book. I'm very excited about it. It's just going to be a, a tremendous um, uh, help to so many people throughout Africa. So if you have friends in Africa, um, let, let me know about them. Connect me up with them. Because what, what we would like to do is uh, do a, um, a pre-sale order function so that we know how many books we're going to publish and then we can, we can send them out and distribute them across the continent. Think about that. Circle of impact in all 54 countries of Africa. And that, that is big time. The other big time thing is that earlier this year, um, I signed a contract for a publisher in China to translate and sell the circle of impact there. That excites me very much because of the time that I spent there about three years ago, it was clear to me that there is a hunger for, for, not, for just to talk about personal leadership. People have this desire, I mean, regardless of what, what the government thinks, people are people. They have a desire for their lives to matter. I don't care if you're from China or from Bangladesh or from Germany or from Chile or from Minnesota. I don't care where you're from. You're a human being and human beings inherently want are making decisions about what matters in their lives. Circle of Impact is suited for that. So I'm excited. Circle of Impact Africa, Circle of Impact China. It's gonna be an exciting year. So I'll be back in touch with you as new things develop. And I thank you for your support and your friendship. And I welcome your uh, communication interaction with me. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye.